Hey, and welcome back to Mama Gee's Brecht. Welcome to my tiny little one butt kitchen. The reason I tell you that it's a one butt kitchen is right now my hands are on the counter in front of me. Now, my other hand is on the other counter. One butt fits in here. And we're gonna talk about the junk drawer. Everybody's got a junk drawer. I don't care who you are. I bet you anything that there are junk drawers in Buckingham Palace and there are junk drawers in the White House. Everybody has a junk drawer. And I'm being really kind by saying a junk drawer because most of us have more than one junk drawer and probably have little stashes all over the house of little places that we just squirrel things away saying we're going to get to them later. Well, we're going to get to them today. So. What we're going to need to do is, first of all, have a surface to be working on, which happens to be my counter, which you're going to see in just a second, and the drawers. And some cardboard. I'm going to use some cardboard and whatever else I can come up with to help things be a little more organized without having to go out and spend any money, because I don't have any money. I don't. Most of us don't. When it comes down to it, it doesn't matter what's in your bank account. That's normally earmarked for something else and little cute divider organizer drawers, as wonderful as they may be, cost money that we didn't often budget for. So you're going to see there's going to be a lot of breaks in this video because um, right now I am standing on my right leg with my left knee propped up on a chair because I can't stand for very long and holding myself up with the counter. So you're going to have a lot of little edited pieces here to put together because I can only do this for about five minutes at a time. So this could take me all day. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so what's in my junk drawer? Hmm, a lot of stuff. I'm going to just start taking the things out and putting them on the counter. You'd be surprised what you find. So far, I've got some Whoop, warranty and instructional pamphlets, somebody's business card, batteries, baggies full of pills. Okay, those are Benadryl. A baggie with one battery in it. Top of a bento box, scissors, Christmas tree bulbs. even work. Oh yeah. Pumpkin carver. Some party candles. Nails. Glue. An ear thermometer. Some sort of a mounting bracket for some plastic thing. I don't even have the little scent things that goes in this. This is from Victoria's Secret and I don't want to buy their room scent things because they cost too much. Sunglasses, because those always belong in a junk drawer in your kitchen. Sugar packets. Fuses. Paint brushes and a spatula for spackle. Maybe I should have that over in my makeup, huh? All kinds of stupid odds and ends that just get shoved into a drawer. Shoelaces because we swear we're gonna get to them later and we just need a place to put them. Oh look, here's a Christmas tree ornament. I'm almost horrified at what I'm finding in here. All kinds of stuff, whoa. Revlon Color Silk Shampoo, I mean conditioner for after coloring your hair. I haven't colored my own hair at my own house in years, but that's in there. Piece of my vacuum cleaner. I got rid of this vacuum cleaner. A bulb for the car. A little piece of fabric. All kinds of junk. And you know what? It's just a tiny little drawer and this starts to look pretty daunting. No wonder nobody wants to get in them and clean them up because really you start looking at all these little bits and pieces. Here's a syringe for my dog's medication. All kinds.
kinds of batteries that I couldn't tell you if they worked or not. It's a miracle that when I go into the store to look for anything, that I can actually find anything. Fly paper. The fly paper, these little fly strips, I used those when I lived up in Asheville four, almost five years ago, because we lived on a farm. They moved with us and they've been in this drawer ever since. All kinds of weird and wonderful things are living in my junk drawer. So the first thing that we're going to want to do, and it's pretty basic, you guys know how to do this, Ooh, I was looking for one of these, is to clear out that drawer. Get everything out of it. Every, every, every little bit. I don't think this drawer will come out. Yep. Got to try and move around here so that I can actually get to this drawer. Take it out and you can either just dump it out. Bear with me as I try not to fall because I'm kind of propped. An air wick piece that I don't even use anymore. Either just dump it if you're brave, I'm not. Or just start piling everything up on your counter. Let's talk about when the last time you were in this drawer was. If you're like me, you reach into this drawer for one or two things a couple of times a week, if not a couple of times a day. But for the most part, it's three or four things that sit right at the front of that drawer. The rest of it just gets shuffled around while you're digging for something that you're sure is in there. You've got stuff in there that you haven't looked at in a year, at least. I am going to clean my drawer out, even though there's really nothing in there. I'm going to go ahead and bleach that out. Um, you'll find out with me that I happen to be a big fan of bleach. I own dogs and I am not saying that I need to bleach things because I have dogs and that they make things nasty. I have to bleach things because if things get nasty, it can hurt my dogs. My dogs are my children and um, I am extremely attached to them and if I would be careful with my skin bearing children, I'm going to be very careful with my fur bearing children. So, let's get So, started. I have my drawer here. Dun dun dun, the junk drawer. It's empty. And next to it, I have a pile. And I do mean, let me see if I can get this camera to move. A pile of crap. All right. I know that I could just throw it all back in there and pretend that I had actually cleaned it out and done something with it. But I'm not going to do that. I have some cardboard. Just a piece of cardboard box that something came in the mail in. And, thankfully, I found my ruler. Otherwise, I would be doing this eyeballing it, which I tend to do a lot, which I don't want to do. I want to find out how deep this drawer is. Okay, so... That's 12 inches. So 17 inches. I'm going to take a piece of cardboard and cut it 17 and an, about a half inch long. All right, I've got my piece of cardboard that's 17 and a half inches long. Now, and while I was cleaning out my junk drawer, I found my razor which I've been looking for for a while. The reason I did it 17 and a half inches is to give me a little bit of space to wedge this in. Now this cardboard has a weird little bend in it, so I'm going to have to really work with this to get it to wedge nicely. Now I need to find out how deep I want this. I want this a little shallower than the drawer itself. This drawer sits exactly at three inches, so I'm gonna cut this at about two and a half inches. You all know how to do this, so I'm not going to make you watch me cut 
two okay. and a half inch. Strip. Okay, so I've got my two and a half inch strip, and this is just a half inch longer, so I could, in a perfect world, I would have been able to wedge this in here, but the box had a natural fold in it. So what I'm going to have to do is secure this. Now I am in a rental. So what I'm about to do is probably a big no-no. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue just the ends in place as a divider. In this drawer, I'm going to have two small sections about two and a half inches wide. Hmm, maybe not. I'm going to move it over, not quite half. Have a larger side and a smaller side. Depends on your drawer and what you want. But I'm just making a divider out of some cardboard. Now, if you want this to look pretty, all you have to do is wrap it in some contact paper. That would also make this more rigid. I really don't care what the inside of my junk drawer looks like as long as I can find what I'm looking for in it. A little bit of an angle change here because I needed to plug the camera in. All right, so like I said, I am going to hot glue this in. Now, those of you who have worked with hot glue, which is probably most of you, you know that hot glue does not really hold that well unless you put tons of it on. So because I'm in a rental and I don't want to wreck it, I know that this will come back out when I need it to. And if it doesn't, oh well. I've been here several years. They're not going to give me back my full damage deposit anyway because I have puppies. I mean, honestly, have you ever lived in a place where you had to give them a damage deposit and gotten the whole thing back? If you have, I want to hear about this because I have never, even a place that I lived in once that, um, I can't even say that I lived there. I think in the year that I was there, I spent a total of a month in it because I was traveling a lot and um, <laughs> they didn't give me back my whole damage deposit. It just is the way it is. They said basic wear and tear. All right, so I've got that in there and you can see I've got a wider area and a more narrow area. Now, if you need to glue this down underneath heavy duty to make it stay put, by all means do so. I don't want it to wiggle, so I'm just gonna lay a bead of glue down one side. Again, this will all come off very easily with a razor blade. I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to unplug that. My big old dog's around by the plug and he's making me Okay, nervous. so I'm going to set this off to the side and let the glue do its thing and harden back up. And now we're going to come to the disaster. I'm going to pop this camera up so you can see my disaster. That helped you a little bit more of me than you need to see. I didn't think about this very well, did I? Hmm. Okay. So, for some reason, we tend to get emotionally attached <laughs> to the stuff in our junk drawer. Why? I don't know. There are things that we obviously need. Gorilla glue. My husband will tell you what the right name for this is. Plier thingies. <laughs> thermometers of varying types, ceiling hooks. These things are things that we need and we can use. Cables. But then there's stuff in there that you're not quite sure why it's there. Okay, I had to stop because my son just came in from school, which means that the dogs have to bark. All right, there's stuff in your drawer you're not even sure why it's there. I have a receipt here from 2011 from something I mailed in 2011. In 2011 this obviously was an important receipt. It isn't anymore. 
the way you need to look at your drawers and any storage in your house because I don't care what size home you live in whether it's a little bitty 1100 foot apartment like I've got or a 4,000 foot home storage is something we never have enough of any storage space is prime real estate that's the way you've got to look at it and you would not rent prime real estate to trash right you wouldn't want the best premium real estate going to somebody or something that would just destroy it and bring down its value. So you need to look at your storage the same way. Well, I'm looking in my drunk, junk, drunk, see, drunk drawer, junk drawer and seeing that there is a lot of trash living in some really good prime real estate. So I need to start being ruthless. If I have not needed or looked at or looked for an item in the last year, and I will say a year because there are some things that are in here that are kind of a once a year thing like the pumpkin carver. If I haven't looked for it or needed it in a year, it's gone. If I cannot recognize it, tell you what it's for, and why I have it, it's gone. Now, the caveat to that is that my husband does have bits and pieces like this that I'm not sure what that's for, so I wouldn't throw that away. But what I will do with it is get out my best friend, the sandwich baggie. Now, you may think a sandwich baggie is not a good idea. She'd rather have it in something a little sturdier. Okay, I get it, I see your point. Here's mine. Sandwich baggies can be scrunched, can be flattened out, can be folded and made much smaller than if I've got four little things in this baggie, I can get it down to this size instead of a great big container. Again, real estate. So into this bag, I'm gonna put all the little metal bits and pieces that I'm not sure about that my husband would know about. So there is my little tiny package of little metal items that my husband would know about. I'm going to set that off to the side. The next thing I'm looking at in here is some of these booklets that when you get a new appliance, it'll come with it and they've got little recipes in them. If you actually use them, keep them. If you don't, throw it away, you're never gonna use it. If you haven't used it yet, you're not going to. Then, the information booklets on appliances. Um, it's a blender. If you know how to use it, you're good, as long as it doesn't have the warranty information on it, throw it out. Or in this case, this was from Sirius XM Radio, which um, they really pissed us off. So, we don't use it. Silly little bits and bobs of paper that really mean nothing. Here is a receipt for something. Oh, a UPS declaration dated, hmm, 2011. It's 2013. Does it matter anymore? No. This stuff gets thrown out. Okay, so after a major break here, um, I'm going to get stuck back in. The next little baggie that I'm going to pick up, and I don't know about your house, but at my house, batteries are something that I can never keep track of and never seem to be able to find. But when I dump out a junk drawer, there seems to be a million of them. So I am just going to throw batteries into a baggie. And basically, that's what all we're going to do is put like with like the stuff that we want to keep. Where I'm talking about being ruthless is stuff that... I don't know what it is. I haven't used it in over a year. Then I don't need it. This stuff is getting thrown out. Little odds and ends. This is a piece, little elephant, off of a, um, what do you call it, keychain. You know what? I've already got my keys on a keychain. I don't need a 50-pound keychain. That's going in the trash, too. So just get rid of stuff. Um, these little packets of Splenda and sugar. 
Yeah, I thought I was being slick and picked those up. They ended up in a drunk junk drawer. They've probably been there over a year. Don't need it. Get rid of stuff you have no idea what it's for, you can't remember, and you haven't looked for it in a year. The stuff that you do know that you need and you know what it's for, put them in little baggies. And I'll show you what we're gonna end up with at the end. Okay, so at the end of all that, this is what I have. Still a jam-packed drawer, yes, but I know where everything is. Right down here in the front, in the larger spot, it's one of my scissors, blades, any other little tools end up, and behind it, towards the back, are the hooks and the little screws and little bits of metal that I'm not sure what they are because they're little baggies full of my husband's stuff are in the back here. I'm not likely to need them anytime soon so they can stay towards the back of the drawer. Up here, I have my thermometers. Right behind that, I have the bags that have the cords I might need. And very, very back of this is where the uh, nightlight light bulbs, fuses and stuff are. So I know where everything is and there isn't anything in here that I don't need or can't use. But with this divider, I know what is on what side. Makes it a lot easier. I don't have as much trash in here. If I need something, I just have to look for the baggie, pull it out, there it is. Get what I need, tuck it right back in. If I need three batteries, I'm not searching through to find three batteries. The batteries are all in a bag. I can pull the batteries that I need. Make sure you take all the air out of it that you can so it'll compress down. Tuck it right back in the drawer and I'm good to go. So with just putting in a cardboard divider, that's going to help. Could you put in more? Absolutely. I was considering coming this way and compartmentalizing a little bit more, but it really wasn't going to work for me because I have very long scissors and I've got some screwdrivers and stuff like that that live in this drawer. Now, when my husband asks me for a whatever, I know exactly where it is in this drawer, even if it gets mix, mixed up and moved around a little bit, everything's in its own baggie. There you go. There's your junk drawer. I know we all have more than one. We need to get working on the other ones. But the key is, if you don't know what it is anymore, you haven't looked for it in a year, throw it out. You don't need it. It's just taking up valuable real estate. All right, so that's Mama Gia's breakfast for today. Thanks for watching and have a good one.